I'm going to start tonight on the basis of a question, not from the people of Palestine themselves, but from the people who are watching the people of Gaza. There are a few people that have asked the question, where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where is God in all of this? I'm going to start with what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned of the coming out of Al-Ya'juj wal majuj This corrupt group of people that overtake the earth in its last days. And as they come out and they wreak havoc on every single part of the earth, except where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shielded Isa alayhi salam and his righteous followers. And yet Juj and Majuj have come to this earth and they kill everything that is in sight with absolutely no mercy. In their intoxication with their arrogance and their oppression, they say to each other, we've already killed everyone on the earth. Let's kill everyone in the heavens too. And the Prophet sallallahu says in the hadith of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, which is the authentic, that they would throw their arrows to the sky at the same time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have simply turned the arrows on them and let the arrows hit them back. What did the Prophet say Allah Azza wa Jal does? Allah causes the arrows to return to them with blood so that for a moment they can think, we succeeded, we've killed everyone on earth and now we killed everyone in the heavens too. But look at the immediacy of how this interaction with the heavens is happening in those days. The Prophet ﷺ said that Allah Azza wa will then send a parasite, which is a particular parasite that would be in the noses of sheep and that would kill them. They would all be wiped out by it. And Isa alayhi salam and the believers would send someone out who fears no one but Allah to see what has happened and he would find that all of them have died at one time. The Prophet ﷺ said Allah Azza wa would send birds with necks like the neck of camels that would pick them up because their rotting corpses would stink the earth, would pick them up and throw them all into a pit. And then Isa alayhi salam, Jesus peace be upon him, would look to the skies and he would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send down rain to clean the earth from what is left over of them, from the stench, from the dirt of them. And Allah Azza wa Jal would send a rain, the immediacy between the dua of Isa alayhi salam to the heavens, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the heavens, the response coming from the heavens to the earth, the rain comes down by Allah's permission and it cleans the earth. And it would be said to the earth, let your fruits come out and let the barakah, let the blessing of the earth be restored. And the earth produces by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessing like we have never seen before. Fruits that we have never seen before. The immediacy in those last days is so felt and perceived both with the oppressor as well as the righteous. They call Allah Azza wa respond right away. Your brothers and sisters, I bring it to Gaza. When you see Benjamin Netanyahu and their defense ministers speak with such pride, speak with such confidence and arrogance, think that they can exact all sorts of punishment on the believers with no consequences, using the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to try to mock the people of Gaza and mock the rest of us by extension, know that their end is near. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a sign that this is the beginning of the end for them. That when you reach that point where you start to think that you've become immune and that you can mock the believers with their scripture and that you can quote your own twisted scriptures and turn the believers into less than animals and think that you can descend your pamphlets of ayat of Quran and mock the believers, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing you to your breaking point. This is a glad tidings for us. I know it hurts us when we see them. But if you read history, we've seen this episode before. We've seen these arrogant tyrants before. They never remain on their pulpits. Not only is this genocide not going to continue ta'ala and end up with a whole bunch of people in Jannah, a whole bunch of people from Gaza in Jannah, and a whole bunch of renewed people, renewed Muslims, and people whose eyes are opening up to Islam. But it will end up with the humiliation of those who seek to humiliate. And when you start to ask, where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of this? The very first time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions as-sabirin, the patient in the Quran, when you're reading in Surah Al-Baqarah, inna Allah ma'as sabirin, Allah is with the patients. Wa bashir as-sabirin is the next time that you come across the verse about as-sabirin, the patients. Give glad tidings to the patient. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ala inna nasrullahi qareeb, that the victory of Allah is close, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb. When my servant asks you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, concerning me, I am close. 
before we get to the specifics of the ending of the episodes, we get to the specifics of what moves the characters, what moves the people themselves. Because what is in the people of Gaza is nothing short of majestic. And I want to be extremely clear here. You've seen the videos of the people of Gaza. How many times are they asking, where is Allah? How many times are they questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Despite being subjected to the worst of cruelty, you have more people living in the comfort of their homes in some of the most developed cities in Europe that are questioning God's existence and questioning God's wisdom than people who are being subjected to the worst of human cruelty. Why do you think that is? Do you think they're deluded or do you think they have something? That if you don't have it, you don't understand it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them something. Now here's the other side of that. The people of Gaza are not asking where is Allah, but they are asking where are you? They are asking where are the rulers of the Muslims? They are asking where is this so-called ummah of two billion people? They are asking where is this political and military and economic strength that you supposedly have? They are asking, where are these people that supposedly love Masjid Al-Aqsa and that follow a Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whose first Qibla was Masjid Al-Aqsa? They're asking where you are, they're not asking where Allah is. They're asking where the leaders are, they're not asking where the Creator is. They understand that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has tested them in a mighty moment and they have a direct connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. They perceive Allah under the airstrikes. They perceive Allah through the hunger. They perceive Allah through the tears as they bury their loved ones. They perceive Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala even as they see the most beloved of people to them torn up into different limbs. They perceive the presence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala but they feel the absence of the Ummah. Allah Azza wa Jal will gather us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, where were you? And it's something that should move all of our hearts right now to ask ourselves, are we doing the best that we can? But they're not asking, where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You have to ask yourself, do you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And do you believe in what you are seeing as a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His presence rather than His absence, which is what everybody else is trying to tell us? Are you seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala present in the strength of the people of Gaza? Or are you seeing absence in the supposed strength of the oppressor? That's a you issue to sort of refocus your iman and go back to your heart. Have you put yourself already in that situation where I will not be deceived by the destruction in front of me. Instead, I will be inspired by the faith and the resilience in front of me. I refuse to see broken buildings. Instead, I see unbreakable people that know where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, that aren't questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna nasrullahi qareeb. Allah's victory is close bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show us His promise. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who told us through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that of the signs of the Day of Judgment is Umrani Bayt al-Maqdis. That the area of Bayt al-Maqdis will be established. We believe that as much as we believe that a house is being built when we see the bricks already being put together. Because we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In Allah ma'al mu'mineen. In Allah ma'al sabirin. In Allah ma'al muttakhin. In Allah ma'al muhsineen.